Magnus Haystek, you have got some guests on a very exciting uh, new development that we're going to be talking about today in Mauritius. Now, I know you like Mauritius. I know you like diversification away from South Africa. But just tell us who your guests are, Magnus. Yes, good afternoon, Alec. You know, as you, as you quite rightly say, I mean, I've been a great fan of, of Mauritius for, for many reasons, but we're not going to go into that. But we have uh, Stephanie Popinel, uh and Derek Mace. They are both uh, key executives of the new um, Harmony Golf and Beach Estate, which is being launched. In, in literally in my backyard. I mean, at, at the moment, I'm Sue and my wife, my friends, we cycle on this fantastic piece of land, and it has the most magnificent views. The infrastructure was put in pre-COVID, and this is the launch of a, a very new, exciting golf and hotel resort scheme in the southwest of um, of, of Black River area, Mauritius. Stefan, how many of these projects have you been involved with? Well, um, Alec, thanks for hosting me, uh, all of you. And um, so I previously worked for the Medzin Group in Mauritius that did uh, Tamarina, which was quite a well-known development uh, that uh, happened in 2008. And as part of a group I now manage, we also have um, quite a massive project in Morocco where we're doing uh, 300 units and three hotels, a golf course, a third of which have been done already. So, and I've been working on this uh, Harmony project for quite intensively for the past uh, two and a half years. So, yeah, we, we're really looking forward um, to get, uh, to come to South Africa and, and get these sales uh, going. Eh? And Derek, your involvement? So, Alec, um, and hello, Magnus. Hello, Alec. I've been involved in Mauritius properties for 16 years now. I've been involved in various developments. And um, obviously, this opportunity came along. Stefan contacted me and said, would you like to get involved? And I jumped at it because I believe this is probably the Rolls Royce of all developments on the island, uh, particularly where it's positioned, Alec, on the West Coast. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited about it. Do you want to just change your uh, the line of your camera for a minute? Uh, we we're cutting you off at your at the mouth there. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Now you're looking okay. good. Yeah, yeah, you're looking great. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's okay. Magnus. It's called it's called Harmony Golf and Beach Estate. So there are many many developments around the world that I know you with your huge client base you talk to about. Why is this one? What's so special about this one? Well, um, if you understand what's happening in Mauritius, you know, and I went back after the COVID was lifted, and I must tell you that, you know, the South Africans are there in their numbers because it was a backlog of two years. Nobody could go. And many people are looking at diversification, second citizenship, residency, and, and looking for business opportunities. I know that particular piece of land, and I've tried to get you there quite often, and, and it really is about the last genuinely sea-facing piece of land left on the island that can be developed because land on the on on the coast or close to the coast is very scarce and very very expensive so this has been a long time in the making the black river area is booming people are building up the mountain sides like clifton and and bantry bay and those places and um you know if you just know what's happening in mauritius if you're looking for a pure investment or the, or, or setting up a home for you and your family, you know, this is, you know, it's going to be a nice, nice development in my view, especially that you've got the name like Beach Comer behind it. Because it's very important that you look at the developer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not casting any aspersions, but there are one or two developments in Mauritius that great things were promised, but um, the developers kind of walked away and, and left, left you with the pieces. So with the Beach Comer name and the area, which we know well, I think it, it'll be superb. So you've done your due diligence on the developer. Is that where one starts when looking at, at offshore investments? Well, of course, that's one of the uh, reasons. But remember, the, the property uh, market in Mauritius is very well controlled and strictly controlled by the government. And there are many hoops to go through before you get permission to build, permission to be a PDS scheme or an IRS scheme. And then, of course, your money is safe in the sense it goes into an escrow account until a certain sales level has been reached. So people have not lost money in Mauritius as a result of dubious investment schemes. 
you might have found a, a scheme or two that promised something and didn't really finish it. And then that's been dealt with by the government. So they're very strict that you do not have the fly-by-night developers who come and take your money and it all disappears. So, you know, in, in that sense, your money is protected by the Mauritian government. Stefan, Magnus was telling me a little earlier about the Harmony Golf and Beach Estate, and he said it's 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 on the what he called the Bura Monaco. Uh, what <laughs> what, he, what he meant by that? There are yeah. many South Africans who who are there, and it also, in a way, um, it looks a bit like Monaco in that it's it's right on the beach. Is he exaggerating, or do you have a lot of South Africans who who've shown interest? No, not exaggerating at all. <laughs> no, we we have um, actually this this really fantastic piece of land. I think. Uh, uh, there, there are several aspects of it that makes it interesting. First of all, the topography. It's a, it's a, a seafront uh, development with, with extraordinary views. Uh, all plots have either views on the Gulf, either views on the sea, or both. Uh, there's no plots that don't have anything, so it's, this is, is quite nice. And usually these type of developments, uh, when you look at the competition, have been done in um, a bit far from the, let's say, the, the regions where there's some birds in Mauritius. And, and now to be able to have such a quite an, a big development of 220 villas and a golf course right next to this Black River region, which is very, very popular. Uh, historically, the north was, was uh, and still is in Mauritius, uh, quite uh, an interesting region for, for people to expatriate and, and even to come on holidays. And uh, But the west region since the past, uh, 10 to 15 years have developed uh, tremendously well and with lots of facilities like uh, the restaurants, uh, clinics now, schools, sports centers and, and there's actually a, a very big South African community. I know, I know Derek lives there um, and um, we, we, we're quite happy to, to have this property in such a region because at the same time, it's not in the middle of Black River. It's, it's a bit of a, on, a, on a peninsula, which, which makes it uh, uh, quite uh, isolated. But at the same time, you just drive 10 minutes and you're in the center of Black River. So it's very, very, very interesting huh? with regards so to the your region. You obviously know South Africa very well from your accent, Derek. What yes. are there any parallels in South Africa that you that this uh, this development in Black River or even the Black River area uh, would people here would associate with? Absolutely, Alex. So one of the reasons that Black River has become so popular for South Africans, and Magnus will bear this out, is the fact that first of all, the climate is outstanding. Oh. Um, the mountainous area, it reminds you a lot of Cape Town or even the low felt. Um, and of course, the, the ease of, of fitting into Mauritius. I always say to people that want to come and live here, it's a soft landing because you, they, they speak English, they speak French, but they speak English as well. And it's very, very easy to assimilate into the lifestyle. Yeah, people are very welcoming and friendly. And yes, I, I mean, I've been here 16 years. I've done a few other uh, projects. Magnus was involved with one and we've had a a great success for South Africa. South Africans love it here. It's close to South Africa, so they can pop on a plane and three or four hours later they're home. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it, it a lot, ticks a lot of boxes for South Africans, for sure. And the kind of people who are buying it, particularly from our part of the world, are they buying to relocate or is it a second home, holiday home? So that's a great yeah. question. I was, I was hoping you to ask that. When I first started selling in Mauritius, it was guys looking for a holiday kind of retirement going forward. Um, today, it's, I'm getting a lot younger people are getting in, interested in investing. So before it was guys over 50 looking to retire in their early 60s or whatever. Today, I'm getting a lot of youngsters in their late 30s and 40s with young families coming across and are very interested in moving here. Stefan, I, yeah. I guess with the remote working ethic that we're seeing around or revolution around the world, there might be people sitting in South Africa saying, hang on a minute, um, I can... I would like to work there. It's near to the sea. It is, uh, it is safe. Uh, is this something that the Mauritian infrastructure lends itself to? Yes, totally, um, Alec. Actually, I think the COVID, uh, despite being really catastrophic for our hospitality industry, but we've seen on, on the property side that, uh, you know, um, people are more and more willing to invest in property. As Magnus, as Magnus said in the past uh, 10, 15 years, I think apart from maybe uh, some development that 
were not properly done, but otherwise in good developments with good developers, nobody lost money on their property since uh, the last, I would say, 10, 15 years. So I think it's a good investment. And then your point on, on this remote working, we can see how easily we do Teams meetings and uh, work remotely. Uh, it's, it's a real pitch for us to tell uh, people to come and even not relocate completely, but at least spend uh, a few months in the year in Mauritius. And what's really interesting is that if, when they buy a property in the these schemes, they get the Mauritian residency, uh, permanent residency. Uh, but if they spend more than six months in Mauritius, obviously they can also have uh, become a, a fiscal resident. Uh, and, and this also comes with, with some advantages in terms of our, our fiscal jurisdiction. Magnus, that's think, lower I tax think, rates. Uh, uh, is that was, right? Yeah, I was just going to add, Stefan, is very 100%. I, when I went back now, I, I met a, a lot of young people working 183 days or more in Mauritius, and they work for companies all over the world. You ask him, what are you doing? Now I'm a developer for a UK company, or I'm a film maker in New Zealand. And for a lot of South Africans, this tax advantage, you know, your first 1.25 million uh, rand per annum, if you work 183 days outside of South Africa, means you're not taxed on that income, not in South Africa and not in Mauritius. And a lot of people have said that is fantastic and that's what is happening. And, and, and Derek is right. A lot of young people like myself are now sitting up in Mauritius. <laughs> and uh, and uh, going to do that. And uh, you can choose your weather. You can choose your friends. And, and really, it is a very, very uh, nice environment. And it's absolutely crime-free. There's just no crime. I'll give you an example. I drive the same car there that I drive in South Africa, identical. My insurance premiums in Mauritius is a quarter of what I pay in South Africa. Because there are no hijackings, the only thing that can happen is you bump or scrape your car, you know, after having a glass of wine or two, and that's about it. Really, it's, it's, uh, that's just one example of the crime-free status of Mauritius. There are no murders. There's one or two per year, which are domestic incidences. And, you know... I've been involved, and Derek has been there much longer, but, you know, I know Derek for 30 years, um, and, and he was a great figure here at Danefern, and he went left to Mauritius, and, and, and he'll, he'll, he'll tell you, it's, it's just a fantastic lifestyle. So you swapped Danefern for Mauritius, Derek? I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people said I was crazy at the time, but it was the best thing I ever did, Derek. It's, uh, you know, I can't, I can't say enough about Mauritius. What Magnus says is 100% true. It's so low in crime that you, I mean, I don't think I've ever locked my front door. And that's the truth. So I'm not, I'm not telling you just to for effect. And the, as, as far as the Mauritian currency is concerned, because clearly um, we in South Africa are very aware of the volatility of the RAND. Derek, is there, can you give us some insight on, on how that's performed in the 15 years that you've been there? Yeah, so obviously the currency has taken a bit of a battering, with, especially with COVID and the fact that, you know, we lost our tourism for two years. Um, uh, I think Magnus probably can give you more insight into the currency than I can, but it's it's kind of stabilized now um, and, and it's carrying on. But it doesn't really affect your lifestyle on a day-to-day basis because Mauritius is currency. You can trade in any currency once. So you can keep your accounts in dollars and draw down into rupees as you need it. So. You know, it, it, there's a lot of options, even with the currency in Russia. So, Mag, there's no, just, no exchange control there, as we well, are used to in that's, South Africa. That's one of the advantages. You can live in Mauritius. The, the Mauritian rupee has declined against the dollar, but all, all currencies have. So, it's not a, it's not a Mauritian issue. It's a, it's a global issue. And But the nice thing is you can go into the bank, you can choose your currency, and you can hedge your costs or your, or your expenses in your bank account. You don't have that in South Africa. And you can go to MCB or whichever bank you use and you say, I want my money in euros or half in dollars, half in euros or, or a little bit in yen, which is fantastic. And most people manage their currency risk by means of that facility, which you don't have in South Africa. And then if you want to move the money, you move it. It is, it is so nice to be dealing with adults saying, can I move a million rand from this account to that account in another part of the world? No questions asked. Yes, sir. It's done. In South Africa, you know what, we, we have to jump through loops and, and fill in forms and, and beg and plead. Uh, it's just such a wonderful, mature society to live in as far as exchange control is concerned. 
Well, Stefan, my two countrymen have uh, made quite a compelling argument for the environment, but the, the development itself. Tell us a little bit more yeah. about the uh, development. How big is it? How much do you have yeah. to pay so, to get so, in? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be very happy to give you because, uh, you know, we, we've, we've worked quite extensively to try and give a, a very strong positioning to this development, not just doing some houses and a big estate because there are views. So, so the, the estate is on 150 hectares with uh, 220 villas um, uh, on plots averaging 2,000 square meters and the villas are of a minimum gross built area of 400 square meters. Um, where, where we've tried to be uh, different is on, on all the thinking about architecture. So we, we've been quite a long way on the concept of bioclimatic architecture whereby, you know, uh, Black River is very sunny and, and the sun of obviously uh, sets to the, to the west. And so you, you've got beautiful sunset, but then again, you need to plan your houses in, in, in some um, sort of ways where it can manage properly the, the interaction with the elements. So there's been lots of, of thoughts on the orientation. Well, we have three villa types which are based on the orientation. We have the villa N, W and S for north, west and south. And the villas have been thought. All the villas have got an internal courtyard. Uh, we, we protect the facades against the sun and wind. Um, we, we, we have done a lot of... of um, research on all the landscaping as well to be able to keep it as natural as possible uh, even in the design of our golf course because there's not a lot of of water in the in the western region we're going to have a desalination plant um, but we, we've done really a lot on, on this thinking around sustainability and bioclimatic architecture we are also within the 150 hectares uh, property we are creating and restoring restoring a, a new wetland area uh, of uh, six hectares which is very very big which is going to be next to the to the golf course and it's going to be very nice for the fauna and the flora uh, so there, there's been quite a lot of, of thoughts around it um, all, all the houses are ground floor only um, and as I was saying, the topography is like you have uh, villas which are five meters uh, above sea level, which goes up to 55 meters uh, with differences of six to 10 meters between the different uh, plateaus. Uh, so with uh, ground floor only villas, it, it's maximizing views. Um, so and, and the last thing around the, the positioning is the community. You know, th this region is booming because there's quite a lot of wealth but there are re real uh, issues on poverty as well uh, as I'm sure Magnus and Derek will, will have seen when being there so we really want to have an inclusive development we already started working with them we are at the pre-sale level but we try to bring them for to do the site cleaning uh, to do the fencing works uh, we've started you know a, a big social plan and uh, I just inaugurated last week uh, a kids playground for, for one of the, the poor uh, areas area of a, of a region. So, so there, there's a, a inclusive, inclusive development on, on the site itself. I think that that's on, on, the, on the, if you want, on the site, uh, Alec. And then I think one of a, of a great, great strength of this development is the association with Beachcomber. You know, Beachcomber has been in Mauritius since 1952. In September, we're celebrating our 70th uh, anniversary. Uh, we are very strong in, in South Africa. We've got lots of, of South African clients who know the brand quite well. And uh, actually, the, the, the development is being done by a, a group which I manage, which is called Semaris, that now owns, there's been a, a spin-off, and, and there's about uh, 150 million euros of assets that, be, that have been transferred to this new group with a specific focus on residential property development. So we're doing this big one in Mauritius, a massive one in Morocco, and we also are designing one in Prala, uh, in Seychelles. 
over 60 hectares. So this group is really around property development so with uh, the proper know-how and, and the proper approach, but is uh, uh, there's a management contract between Beachcomber and the group, So and, and there's strong ties with Beachcomber, and Beachcomber is going to manage the golf, is going to do a resort on the seafront uh, to which the, the clients will have access to. Uh, Beachcomber has got Paradis and Dinarobin, which are two very well-known hotels on Le Morne, and uh, villa owners will have access to these two hotels will be able to play golf at these two hotels which are 15 minutes away from from uh, harmony and so they will have a choice of two golf courses and and to be able to enjoy um, the hospitality of beach combat sounds great magnus uh, what about the numbers though take us through uh, what you need to be able to participate here Yes, it's a, it's a top-end market product, and it comes in, it starts at about 1.5 million euros. So it's not, uh, you know, it, it, is a, it is an expensive product, and it is for how well-to-do people who have the means to invest in, in a property such as this. And we've noticed uh, the first reactions we get from people, they're doing this family units, and, 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 and two families we've spoken to will buy it collectively for their for their family to come and visit whenever they want to. There are people who are want to buy, they can afford it. They want to emigrate, but they don't want to emigrate. They don't want mm-hmm. to cut the umbilical cord. So they probably will spend the, 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 the good weather in South Africa and the good weather in Mauritius. So it depends on, on many, many things. It's, uh, it's not an entry-level development, but it is a prime development. But if you compare it to what you would pay for that type of development, in other parts of the world, Australia, New Zealand, uh, even the United States, you know, it, it comes in at a, at a discount and it's much closer to South Africans. So if you took it uh, as an alternative to Hermanus, which is where a lot of South Africans are now looking up uh, as, as a possible uh, place that works in South Africa, and it's, you're talking about similar kind of uh, prices, uh, in Hermanus, for, for certainly from what Stefan has explained to us, uh, what the villas are like, uh, would that be a direct comparison? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but it'll be buying in Hermanus in the early days before it became so popular, because Hermanus today is magnificent. It's one of the most pretty parts in the world. I, I know it very well and love it. But you're paying the same kind of price you would for a front end or a sea facing property in Hermanus. Uh, as you would in in, uh, in 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 Mauritius, the only difference over time, I suspect, will be a, a currency factor. What the currencies do relative to the dollar or, or whatever currency. And just as an aside, it was very interesting. Now the markets, uh, uh, global markets, in a bit of a doldrums. I sent you a piece by Deutsche Bank, mm-hmm. and they did a piece, and they said that if there is global stagflation over the next five to 10 years, the preferred asset class amongst the high net worth individuals is number one, is property. And secondly, the S&P 500. So that's very interesting that if uh, in in stagflationary times, bricks and mortar tend to do very well as opposed to equity markets that have done well historically. So that's an important factor as well a lot of people are saying, we don't know what the stock market is going to be doing the next 10 years. Let's put some of our money into bricks and mortar in another part of the world. It's just part of the diversification play. Now, talk us through South Africans who are, they've got the wherewithal. They do like the story that we've heard about Mauritius. They like the story that Stefan's told us about the development itself. How do they physically get into buying into this, given that South Africa has exchange control? Well, they can do an e- e- ETF across and pay the money across, but better still, they can, we, we having two seminars next week in South Africa. One is in, 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 in Santon, at the Brentis office in Santon, 135 days the avenue, it's right in the heart of Santon. And then Derek and his team will stay there for three days and talk to uh, uh, potential investors. Because you have to sit down and explain how it works, what you must pay, what are the paperwork, where do you apply, uh, EDB apl- applications. And then it moves down to the 9th of June in Cape Town, the Brentis office um, in Granger Bay. Again, we repeat, we have a presentation, and Derek and them will be there for a day or three. 
talking to local clients. But more than that, people who are interested in, you cannot, and we advise people, get on a plane and go and see the site. Those people who are interested, they can get onto a plane and, and stay in one of the developments uh, in the La Belize area for three nights for free. And if, they, and if they do actually commit, they will be reimbursed by the developer their fee. So they can actually go and have a look and walk the site and choose this spot but they first have to reserve it before they go. And that's what we tell people. You don't spend that kind of money uh, without actually going to see if you like it. Because people ask the normal questions. Where are the good doctors? Where are the hospitals? Where are the schools? Where are the shopping centers? And uh, that's what we tell people. If you're interested, fly there, stay for free. You can stay for longer. The three days is on the house, and then you make up your mind. So we'll be discussing that, and people can go onto the Brentist website uh, to go and have a look the time venue, but they have to book uh, and come across and come and chat to Derek, chat to Stefan and myself, but they're the experts. But I know the area very good as well, And uh, but my French is not that good. So, <clears throat> Derek, it sounds like uh, Magnus is very confident. You prepare to put people on an aeroplane and send them over uh, and reimburse them. So uh, I guess that he he likes this project in your list of, of those that you've done in Mauritius over the last 15 years, how does it rank? So, so Alec, to, to be really frank with you, I've, I've done some really good ones because I've been here from day one. The thing about this one is, is what uh, Stefan made very clear. Each stand has a view, and that, that is very difficult to get in Mauritius. And for me, that is the, that is the criteria. And, and Magnus is 100% right. When people get to the site and see it, they are blown away. I mean, it's it's been phenomenal. Our, our uptake. You know, we launched in the middle of April. Um, we've been working out of the Beachcomber Hotel down at uh, down at Le Mans, and we've um, we've reserved eleven units. Uh, we signed eleven units, which is a, is amazing. I mean, it's, it's it's phenomenal. It's it's the biggest uptake I've had on any development so quickly. So it's been fantastic. And well, it speaks to itself, Eric. I mean, when you when people get there, they're just blown away by it. You know. It, it, the views are just outstanding, absolutely outstanding. That's very positive, Stefan. Just to close off with, what are the timings here? If uh, you, you're coming to South Africa, as Magnus has said, in the next few days, you're going to be available to talk to people individually and, and give them insights. Then they can get on a plane, go and have a look at, at the, uh, the project itself. But when are they going to be likely uh, to be able to actually move into a house? So, um, Alec, the timeline we, we're working on now, so we launched the, the project uh, officially uh, by the mid, uh, in mid-April. Uh, as Derek said, we, we did some events with the local brokers with, with whom we work uh, extensively. And so we've given ourselves uh, the, all the year of 2022 to reach our pre-sale level. So we're doing a first phase of 81 units and um, we are selling also some service plots to Mauritians only for the time being uh, and villas. So we need to sell some service plots and some villas to be able to, to start. And hopefully we'll start um, by the beginning of 2023, all the infrastructure works and the villa constructions. And um, we're targeting the first villa deliveries at the beginning of 2025. So to answer directly to your question, if someone comes and visits the site, signs the reservation agreement and puts his money in escrow, he would get his villa by, by uh, beginning to mid-2025.